welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to revisit secret combinations because in the last video, I was trying to find uh, a comment from someone uh, that's a subscriber that has worked in the film industry, and I found that comment. And then there was also another comment by somebody else that currently works in the film industry. So I thought it'd be interesting to read those comments, and share them with you, and then I also wanted to I wanted to talk about the Blood Moon again that's coming up on the 15th. It's the night of the 15th, uh, early morning of the, the 16th, because somebody found that graphic that's talking about the, the 15th, 16th being the midpoint of this long series of uh, lunar eclipses. So I want to take a look at that and share that with you. So we'll start here with Michael Douglas Skews. Now, judging by the profile picture, it looks like Hollywood may have left a mark on him. I, I'm not sure, uh, but he has um, got out of it, uh, or at least he, he didn't go down the path that he could have. So we'll start off with his comment. But before I do, before we talk about the, the evils of Hollywood, uh, I thought that this would be a good video to... Uh, bring up bottles, bottle sods again, bottlesodes.tv. Now, this company has uh, donated my microphone to me, and they do essentially a streaming service for children. This is an alternative to Netflix, YouTube, uh, Disney Plus, things like that. <laughs> that um, may not be the best for your kids, and uh, you know we're going to read about that a little bit more here with. Uh, these comments, uh, this one from Michael Douglas Hughes. So uh, this is, uh, okay, so this is a husband-wife team. They're LDS. Uh, they're subscribers to the channel. And they produce content for children that's meant to not overwhelm them, not overstimulate them, and get them to spend more time in real life rather than attached to a screen. So... I'm going to read just a little uh, thing here on the website. It says, a safe, inspirational, age-appropriate, engaging, without overstimulating streaming service for children ages 3 to 11. Uh, I have one child within that uh, range, and we're going to try this out ourselves. Bottle Sods TV is the Mr. Rogers neighborhood of the 21st century, because uh, as we know, Mr. Rogers didn't quite, <laughs> uh, well, everyone... He, he, he passed away, but there was nothing really to replace his good, wholesome TV show. Uh, it just, it, something like that can't exist anymore uh, in the world that we live. So it looks like, it looks like Bottle Sods has resurrected it. Okay. So if you want Mr. Rogers, BottleSodes.tv. Okay. Um, because we care about what happens after screen time just as much as what happens during screen time, our wholesome, and that's important, wholesome. That That's one of the things that I enjoy where we live right now because we used to, I've always lived in large cities, okay? Lived in Salt Lake, lived in Phoenix. Uh, well, not so much Fort Hood. That's not, uh, it's in the clean area. But this is the first time I've lived in a small town. And one of the things that we wanted by moving to a small town is a place that's more wholesome. You know, there's still some, you know, problems here, but it's so much more wholesome than the large cities. Uh, it's wholesome is getting hard to find. So if you're looking for wholesome and good and content without an agenda, uh, I would check out bottlesodes.tv. So anyway, um, our wholesome content is designed to inspire children to learn more about or emulate what they watched, thus promoting independence, creativity, social and emotional well-being, and exploratory curiosity about the world around them. They'll get back to doing what children are meant to do. Play. Yes. More play, less screen time. So, and then you, you can have a, you can do a free trial right here. And then it's, uh, it's a 14-day free trial. $5 a month or 47 for the whole year. And you can watch it on all your different devices. Okay. So please support him. Check it out. If you have young children, if you have grandchildren, uh, this is a good alternative. Instead of turning on Netflix or Disney Plus, 
uh, or things like that are that are supposed to be safe, um, which we know are not. Maybe do this instead. Okay, so let's get back to Michael Douglas Skews and let's see what uh, the realities that he has to share with us about Hollywood and the film industry. He says, you should read more Hugh Nibley and maybe a lot less movies. Well, was okay. Uh, I worked in the film industry for 30 years. It is filled with evil and evil thoughts that would make you dot, 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 really freak out. Uh, now, I believe you because, uh, again, I don't know how many of my, how much of my audience, how many of you have, you know, gone, um, you know, metaphorically gone down the rabbit hole, so to speak, looked at all these different uh, secret combination theories uh, and stuff like that of modern day Getty and robbers. But when you start down that path, it doesn't take you long to find out that, you know, the, the film industry definitely is a major, a major tool for Getty and robbers. And why wouldn't it be? It's for your mind. It's a way to get into your mind and introduce ideas. While all you want to do is just a little bit of escapism and be entertained. That's what that's your pure intentions. And then what they do is they take that and then they're like, oh, what can we do with this? Hmm, have you ever thought about this? And they, they put it in such a way that it doesn't it doesn't really seem like they're trying to um introduce ideas uh, unless you unless I think if you have the spirit though if you if you really truly live the gospel um, you're aware you're awake you're a genuine person you don't just follow the crowd you actually genuinely have these principles inside of you then you can see through it right and, and that's why you know I'm not gonna stop watching movies uh, I know that they're bad I, I, I don't like to go to extremes, but I, I do think that we probably should be careful with it and, you know, just see what they're really doing. But um, anyway, I, I do believe him when he says that, uh, that you would really freak out. Okay, less movies, more reading of scripture. Okay, well, yeah, I can get on board with that. Yeah, um, that's all. That's all. I like what you say, uh, but you're my son's age. So, oh, so you're like my dad? Um, in the secret combinations, uh, they be WTE true. Yeah, for sure. I, I know. I, I know it. Um, I was poll look. He must have been like typing on his phone or something. I was poll look pulled from the. Uh, again, there, there's certain things I don't want to say on this channel just because I, I don't want to. Um, so he was pulled from the um, Brotherhood Club and was cast to go into secret combinations, secret combination of secret combinations. Uh, that is the name of it. Okay, so I, that's something that I've never actually heard before. And, and I have looked into the, the Brotherhood Club uh, quite a bit. There, there's a lot of good information out there, but... Um, into the secret combination of secret combinations. That is the name of it. Uh, pretty original, but so frightening that I, I couldn't believe that what they were telling me. Oh my gosh. I backed out and I was in a really bad accident in a coma for four months. Blind in right eye. Uh, if you have read every single thing about this, you know what that means. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. And so much of that imagery right there um, about the eye, <laughs> that that is all over these Marvel movies. It's all over these. If you watch all the Marvel movies, I swear in every single in every single movie, there's always at least one character that uh, magically gets injured in one of their eyes. Just think about it. If you watch the Marvel movies, think back, and there's always an injury to an eye. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so anyway, he says, so keep it up, uh, but I'm just trying to tell you to stay away from movies. Uh, take care. Well, again, Michael, no promises on that, but I, I respect that you're, you're my dad's age, and um, 
you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want all the bad things of movies to happen to me. You know, I, I, I can see that you, you've definitely, you've been immersed in it. Yet you have blood streaming out of your mouth. I don't want blood streaming out of my mouth. Um, and I, I would echo that. Just everyone be careful with movies. Just know that it, it, unfortunately, it's not just fun entertainment. It can be, but just use the spirit. And when you when you hear something that they're trying to say that doesn't feel right, it feels uncomfortable. You know, it's contrary to the gospel. Uh, see it for what it is. You know, don't be part of the crowd. That's the you know the emperor's new clothes. Uh, call it out <laughs> don't just, there's too many people that don't call it out to others or even to themselves so anyway he, ha he has more to say he put another comment um well wait betty macro the 97th said spider way no Ma no way home was a master masterpiece yeah i i agree i was thrilled by my core to my core every second of that film i saw it with my friends and we were we were going absolutely insane when all the crazy stuff started happening. It was such a blast. I I can't believe that they put that together. I'm not going to put any spoilers spoilers out there, but I thought that basically what they did was an impossibility, and I I was thrilled to my core as well. So um, if I remember right, Betty Macro the 97th. Uh, this is actually somebody that's about to go on their mission. This is a young person, so. Uh, we're excited for. I think it's a dude, even though it's Betty Macro. I, you have to, you have to let me know. Uh, the profile picture would make me think that you're maybe a dude, but anyway, that's really cool. Yeah, Spider-Man: No Way From Home. That was really fun. But remember what Michael Douglas Hughes said about it about movies. Okay. All right. Now we have. <clears throat> okay, here's his second comment because. He's responding to this video where I was trying to look for that first comment, and then he says, it was probably me. I know I commented on now I was in music. Uh, oh, yeah. He has a channel, by the way. Go to just, you know what? I will pull it up right here, and then I will put this in the description if you want to go check out his channel. Okay. Now, okay, I know I commented on... Now I'm in music, uh, where it's out in the open, but in film it's much more hidden and way more evil than the music industry. Um, and I was in the the Brotherhood Club, but got out after coming back to church. Uh, then they really tried to get me to stay and go on in the secret combinations of secret combinations. Uh, that's what they call themselves. So if you want to talk it, talk out, let me know. Yeah, possibly. If you're talking to me, uh, like doing an interview, that's a possibility. I haven't done any interviews for a very long time. Uh, in the beginning of the channel, I was doing a lot, and it kind of it kind of actually stressed me out <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but it's not impossible. I, I may do future interviews, uh, possibly with yourself if you're if you're up for it, but. No promises. We'll just, we'll see how things go. All right. So, and then we have on that same video, uh, secret combinations in general, in general conference, we have Nate Smith. He says, I'm in the film business and I can assure you guys that there are absolutely messages that are subtly being inge ingested into all entertainment. It's really, uh, it's really tough right now to make a film without, um, Again, there's certain words I want to avoid. So, uh, to make a film without her ideas being forced into the story or same attraction narratives shoved in, it comes from the higher ups who are controlling everything. It's gotten to the point where they are not really even trying to hide the secret combination anymore. Uh, yeah, and that's definitely true. Um, it's a big message that is now per permitting. Uh, permeating everything and it's obvious look at disney yeah disney is like the worst <laughs> disney is the worst because they're supposed to be a family friendly kid friendly company that, that's what they've historically been uh, although i will say i've always been disturbed by a lot of uh disney movies even the earlier ones because they they leave you with a gross feeling like uh pinocchio when he goes to that 
uh, what is it? That place with uh, like the boys, the naughty boys. <laughs> it, it's it, it terrified me as a kid. Uh, so did Monstro, by the way. Um, you know, uh, Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent, like very disturbing imagery. Uh, oh well, it's just a fairy tale. It's a no. It's because it's creepy and it, it always gave me a bad feeling. Even those early ones, those early movies. So, and there's actually a lot more behind that. As a matter of fact, I know some of you know, you look into Disney, you look into the, um, you know, the hid the hidden things, let's just say that, the hidden things. It's there. It's been there since the beginning. <sighs> okay. So anyway, uh, let's move on to the Blood Moon. Okay. So. Brian Brown sent me an email. He says, I think this is what they are talking about. And yes, this is this is it right here. So you can see now I I haven't verified this myself. I like to verify things myself for myself and then also before I share things with you. But um the fact that this person seems to have been able to coherently put this together uh using Photoshop or something, probably Photoshop, I don't know. It looks really good. Uh, it wasn't a dumb person that put this together. I, I'm just going to assume that th this is probably right. That these these uh, dates uh, you have you have the uh, these blue numbers right here down the middle, which are months. So I guess this starts in April of 2014, and then a hundred months later, you come to May 15th, 16th. And then 100 months from now, it uh, takes you to June 2030. So, I mean, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll accept this. I'm, I'm still going to take it with a grain of salt because I do, I, I'd have to look at the whole picture, like all blood moons. Because I don't know if, like, he framed this in such a way that it ends up like this. I, I don't know. I can't tell. I'm also not an astronomer. I, I, I don't know. But... This does look pretty intriguing, and um, yeah. So, so if you if you can if you can accept this as it's presented, then this is fascinating, especially in light of the video that I did recently about the blood moon that's happening on the night of the fifteenth and uh, the morning of the sixteenth. Right? We talked about how. We have this uh, worldwide devotional for young adults coming up on the night of the 15th. In Utah, uh, it's going to be, or Mountain Time, it's going to be at 6 p.m. Here, Central Time, it's going to be, let's see, it's going to start at 8.32. So now this is interesting right here because, okay, so that would be 7.32 Mountain Time. Uh, I don't know if this is going to run for an hour or an hour and a half or two hours. I don't know how long it's going to run. But essentially, what you have is this This is going to start at 6. And then about an hour and a half later, the eclipse is going to start. The lunar eclipse is going to start. So there, it's like one right after another. Uh, now, you know, I, I, I doubt that the general authorities, President Nelson, would have planned it that way, but does does that mean that the Lord couldn't have inspired it to be this way? No, yeah, it, he definitely could have inspired it to be this way. Uh, who knows Who knows how this, how this happens, or even if it has any meaning. It may not have any meaning. But anyway, um, here you have it right here. We've talked about the fact that it's going, um, it's basically centered on South America, uh, you have this animation right here, and it actually starts turning red as the center of this goes over uh, South America. And then once it goes past South America, it goes back to normal. So it's really, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. We've talked about the fact that this is happening the day after Pesach Sheni, which is second Passover. It's also, uh, you can think of it as second chance or last chance to, to celebrate Passover. That's what it's meant to be. 
uh, even though it doesn't go for a whole week, like the Passover observance goes, uh, it's just a one day thing, but it's a month later and, um, and you have that if you're a Jew and you weren't able to observe Passover the first time for some reason, then you have this second chance. And we've, we explored, um, the different things, you know, the different nuances and things in regards to that in that previous video that I did. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it because I think it's pretty fascinating. Um, now, another, uh, probably this will be the last thing. So, with, with this worldwide, uh, with this worldwide devotional for young adults, so you'll remember that there was the 2018 Worldwide Youth Devotional called Hope of Israel, where Sister Nelson told the story about coming across at least one member from all 12 tribes when they were in Russia. Uh, this was also where the Lord's Youth Battalion idea was introduced. Okay, so on uh, this, this worksheet that I have right here, what I did is I, I notated what year, roughly, uh, that group of, of youth would be going on their missions. Okay, so if you're 18 years old uh, during the devotional, you would probably be starting your mission uh, as a young man in 2018. If you're 17 years old, 2019, and then all the way down to 11-year-olds. Okay. So now we're four years later, and 18-year-olds are now, um, wait, would they have been there, 18-year-olds? I can't remember if, probably not. I don't know, maybe they still would have, it's like they're on the, okay, so whatever, it just, okay. So we're four years later. So now, with this devotional, he's speaking to young adults, and so if you were 18 at that time, then you're 22 now. If you were 17 at that time, now you're 21. Um, 16, now you're 20. And so this group right here, okay, these ones are still uh, either on their missions or about to go on their missions. So this will include the like the first three groups of um, uh, what were at the time youth in 2018. So I find that kind of interesting. That he'll be talking to them again to these ones so anyway uh, i'm gonna be watching it i have to watch it it's it's probably gonna be i've made note of the fact that uh it seems like recently in worldwide devotionals really interesting things are said so again if you haven't watched that video go back and watch it because i cover some of the really interesting things that are brought up during the devotionals and i would expect that there's probably interesting things that are going to be said during this one. But, um, okay, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you, Nate Smith. Uh, thank you, Michael Douglas Skews. Thank you, Benny Macro the 97th, for your comments. And um, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share this with anyone that's interested in secret combinations, movies, you know, this kind of topic, or in blood moons. And I'll talk to you guys later.